In studio with New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap and Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Gentlemen, great to have you along for the ride. Nice to be here, and Matt has not yet charged me with anything. That's a good day. Of course, we're in Berkeley County, so. He has no jurisdiction. Zero. Our producer today is the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin. You just heard the promo there. You can catch them with the Sports Mix, live local sports talk, noon to one today. Via telephone, the uh, winner in the Republican primary for the Senate 15th. He beat the incumbent, Senate President Craig Blair. And convincingly, too, by um, a dozen points, Tom Willis, who won all three counties in the district. Tom, good morning to you. Congratulations. Gentlemen, good morning. Great to be with you. What a beautiful day, huh? Indeed, a sunshiny day. Finally, I'm sick of rain, i got to tell you. Uh, if I'd have put that no. seed down that I bought recently, I'd be loving all this rain, <laughs> yeah. but it's still in my garage not doing its job. Uh, Tom, what was the secret, the, the key, is, as far as your success goes, in beating Craig Blair? Not just beating him, but by 12 points. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I think I think it was a couple of factors. Um, you know, I, it, it, it's really no mystery we just, um, I, you know, A, you know, praise God. B, uh, I had an amazing team that really carried me on their shoulders uh, in a lot of ways in all three counties. Um, so, you know, that's where most of the credit goes. I think the voters um, just connected with me, maybe at a, at a deep level because of some of the, um, you know, tragedies and losses that I've been through. So, you know, I, I could connect with people because I've lost a wife or, you know, I lost a son. Um, you know, I, I've been a single dad of two toddlers. Um, so I, I think that helped um, me connect with people. I think just, just you know, all the meet and greets, the barbecues, the cost. Um, you know, I tried my best to really listen and learn from the voters and, uh, and be present. And I, I, I think they responded um, to that. And, you know, the, and we're talking about thousands of, of interactions um, and, and a lot of folks just really liked the, the fact that I was um, the only veteran in the race, too. So um, I'd say it's a mix of things. There is a Democrat waiting for you in the general, Anthony Murray. What do you know about Mr. Murray? Not much. Um, I, know that, I know that he's uh, pro-abortion, anti-gun, um, pro-Green New Deal. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, for the trans and uh, rainbow, you know, explicit literature in our schools. Um, apart from that, you know, I've never seen him speak or met him, um, but certainly he, he stands that uh, our Eastern Pan, Panhandle values stand against. So uh, I certainly look forward to defeating him in the general. John Gilstrap. Well, congratulations. Um, assuming that the Republican wins over the Democrat in November, uh, what is your first priority? I have to assume that the day after an election has been going and going and going, there has to be that moment where you feel like the dog who caught the car, like, uh-oh, now, now what do I do? So what is, what is your first priority as you prepare for a taking office in January? Yeah, that's a good question, John, and I think there's some truth to that, um, especially, you know, especially you, you, uh, you work so hard, and, you know, in the, in the run-up in April and May, and you kind of cross the finish line, and you're like, oh, a little bit exhausted now and um, you know, gather yourself and look forward to what are the next steps. But, you know, the priorities, the priorities haven't changed. Um, it's, you know, it's being present in the Eastern Panhandle. It's representing our values, you know, with strength and in our interest in Charleston. And, um, you know, the thing I'm most passionate about is making government serve the people and not, not the people serving the government. And so that's, that's a broad statement, but that applies to, you know, the education, the business climate, you know, the infrastructure across the board. So um, just keeping keeping government on a very short leash would be my my response to that. You know, there's if there's a shadow over this, it's when you look at the statistics, what is 17 percent turnout? 17.83 uh, in Berkeley County. In Berkeley County from and I don't know, it, overall, a, a low turnout for the vote. Uh, you're always going to get that in for a, a primary vote, but this is kind of a special primary because it's sort of, as a practical matter, is the the general. Uh, is this show a? Do you think a, a reduced interest of the people in the workings of government, or is it is indicate something else? Well, I, I you know, my opinion is that uh, folks were less enthusiastic because. President Trump had already wrapped up the nomination and, um, you know, so the top of the ticket didn't 
didn't have quite the draw it may have had in other years where, you know, there's still a question mark in the presidential primary. Um, but I think the low turnout was in our favor, you know, that you had mostly the uh, – the voters that really were concerned uh, about educating themselves on the candidates and, um, you know, and, and that, that played into our favor, I think, um, versus, you know, mass media marketing that affects, you know, voters that maybe don't pay too much attention. They just see a name on the way in the door. Um, so I, I think the low voter turnout honestly um, played in our favor. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think the presidential ticket had a lot to do with it. Uh, what do you guys think? I think that's a big part of it. That's why I think there should be a national primary, Tom, because if you're mm -hmm. a, if you're a later state in a primary and it's a primary like this and, and like most where it's already decided by the time you get to the, the you know the 20th and 21st states lined up. Right. People don't turn out and then you get a bad weather day. We had the redistricting issues where some people were going to the wrong precincts. There's a lot that went into this low voter turnout. And I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think a national primary might help to boost turnout during primaries because 17.83% of the people shouldn't wow. be making the decision in Berkeley County for everybody. But that's who turned out. and They did their job. It's the other 82% that didn't. I, I disagree with the national primary. And, and many do. Yeah. That's, that's but, a, but that's, my, that's what I think is best. I've never understood. There are a lot of smart people in a lot of different state legislatures, <clears throat> excuse me, who or state party leadership, they jockey around trying to decide when their primaries are. I really don't understand the strategy. I, I, I guess I understand the strategy of being first. I do not understand the strategy of, of wanting to be in May or you know, towards, towards the end. I, you want to be no the state whose who's voters put them over the top, I suppose. I don't know. I Tom, what do you think? Would, would you like a national primary? You, you once ran for a statewide uh, national federal office. Yes, you know, I, I haven't put too much thought into it to be to be very honest with you. Um, it's intriguing because it would it would certainly it would certainly create more um, drama and interest if everybody went out at the same time. Um, there's a lot of entrenched interests in the uh, the way the system works now. So I don't know. We can talk more about that, Rob. I, 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 I'm not necessarily against it, um, but uh, I'd have to educate myself on it more to be to be very honest with you. Matt, do you have a question for Tom? Oh, um, well, congratulations, Mr. Wells. Um, have you had an opportunity to speak with your opponents? No, no, I, uh, I have not heard from either one of them. Silence is deafening on that one, <laughs> right? I mean, is there going to be an opportunity to talk and to any sort of... I, I would guess that th this was a... Uh, aggressive campaign. There, were, there was a lot of outside was, money coming in. A lot in. of outside money in this one, and I would guess that the three of you didn't walk away friends after this one, Tom. Well, um, you know, for, for my part, uh, I don't. You know, I don't have hard feelings. Um, it, you know, I think the, the the campaign that we ran was as aggressive as we needed to be to win. Um, you know the the when you're taking on the lieutenant governor, senate president. You know the question we got in the very beginning, repeatedly was, well, we have the president of the senate in the eastern panhandle. You're both Republicans. You know why should we vote for you? We'll lose the senate president. And so we had to really demarcate what's the difference between Tom Willis, you know, and the senate president. And so that's what that's what we did. That's what that was. You know, that was our strategy from the beginning. And so that you know that takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of sharp elbows um, when you're taking on you know the establishment and someone who's got hundreds of thousands of dollars um, you know from special interests behind them. Um, so yeah, we you know we, we uh, we're we're not afraid of a fight. Our team was you know our team is strong and we'll we'll take on anybody if we feel like they're not serving West Virginia uh, and the voters well. The last two Senate presidents have lost in their own primary, Mitch Carmichael before Craig and now Craig. Uh, Tom, do you think, I don't know if you can spot a trend, this, this happened at two different times in the state's uh, political story, but do you think the responsibility of being in office as a Senate president, lieutenant governor, detracts from your ability to be perceived as paying attention to your own home counties? Yeah, I think there's some truth in that, Rob. Um, you know, that's one of the complaints I heard a lot, um, and I think it's one of the ways that I was able to connect with voters of uh, just 
just just being present. Um, I heard that, uh, you know, I heard a lot of, we haven't seen him around here um, in years. And, um, you know, the fact that we would drive, you know, the hour and a half to the far reaches of Hampshire County and show up for a meeting, you know, where only two or three people, you know, came. Uh, I think they appreciated that. And, um, you know, we have deep roots in the community between our, you know, the schools um, our kids are in and the sports teams and our church. Um, so we're, you know, we're here. If somebody asked me, are you going to move to Charleston? And I said, oh, Lord, no. <laughs> you know, we love the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, we have deep roots here and, and um, have every intention of being, you know, deeply integrated and present in the community moving forward. So we, you know, stay well connected to the voters. Well, you will have to move there for 60 days at least anyway if, uh, if you win in the general. Yes, yes, but not permanently for sure. With all of the, what's been going on the last few days with the, uh, the election, I'm sure that that it takes up a lot of your time. Uh, you've probably heard about what's been going on in Berkeley County Schools and the um, uh, takeover of North, uh, Middle. North Middle School yeah. and all of that it's kind of issues with the school system. What do you see or do you see a role for the legislature, Senate in particular, um, for getting involved in improving the educational system uh, overall in West Virginia, but more specifically within your district around here? Well, I think, I, I, I think that, you know, I think that something like this is, is allowed to grow and fester unnoticed uh, for some time, uh, largely because there's, there's too much hierarchy and um, weight in Charleston. And so I, I just want to work to flatten the uh, authority down more to the county level. I'd love to see the the supers uh, voted on that accountability, and I think we need to get some you know some some measure of accountability in the school systems, um, you know, early on, so we can we can track uh, like like for instance, here's an, here's a here's a concept. Florida, you know, four times a year um, they run a test just to see how. They, they have a start point, and then they see how students are progressing throughout the year. And it holds schools accountable, and you can see, you know, every quarter uh, real-time data on whether the students are, you know, progressing or falling behind. Um, so I, I think systems like that make a lot of sense to me, where there's more transparency and accountability. And frankly, um, you know, I'd love, to, I'd love to see compensation tied to it, too. Or if you have a school that's really knocking it out of the park, you know, uh, they can, you know, really – uh, be financially rewarded very generously for performance um, because right now you've got, you know, exceptional teachers in the public school system um, and they get paid the same every two weeks as the duds, you know, that don't do anything. And, um, you know, we've, we've been in the school system here long enough to, to see that. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's just contrary to human nature and everything we've learned from free market capitalism from the, you know, for centuries now. Um, when you don't have that incentive or that accountability, you know, you're going to get um, problems like, we, like we've seen, you know, this week crop up here in Berkeley County. Tom, thanks for your time this morning. Congratulations to you once again, and I'm sure we'll be talking a lot between now and the general in November. Thanks a lot, guys. I was hoping to go fishing today, but my wife reminded me I have a day job and uh, we need to feed our kids. So uh, back to work for me. F- kids will eat fish. You can do both. Yeah, you can go <laughs> catch a fish and bring I it mean, home. I don't know. As long as you got I, your I license. I wasn't quick enough on my feet to think of that great response, but I'm going to try that next time. So. <laughs> have a good day, hey, Tom. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Take See care. you, buddy.